I'll give you a choice here, Mike. Here's a little sports talk radio conversation for you. So you got in Denver, you got a situation where a general manager's there and there's no quarterback of the future unless you really believe in Drew Locke, you could turn something around. In Minnesota, you got no general manager at all. Um, and you've got a quarterback who's got an, you know, who's paid like he's Garrett Cole, but only one more year left on that contract, and he really hasn't won very much. And then you got Chicago, where you got your your future quarterback already drafted and ownership expecting you to turn whatever's right there into gold if you consider you know um justin fields straw which is the best job do you think for a coach in the nfl mike florio well they're all open for a reason so none of them are great at this point <laughs> and denver's ownership we, might change too well, how about in that Denver ownership will change it will change i'll be shocked at this point if ownership remains in the bowling family i think the team's going to get sold now George Payton is entrenched, but how entrenched are you if new owner comes in and says, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a multi-billionaire. I'll, I'll write your buyout, and, and uh, here's your check, and we'll go get somebody else. Um, in, in Chicago, I want to know what Ted Phillips' role is going forward. Is he still in charge of the football operation? He's been the president since 1999. They have three uh, postseason victories in 22 years of Ted Phillips being in charge of the football operation. So is he going to be neutralized? Is there somebody else there? In Minnesota, I'd be more comfortable if the Wilfs were not absentee owners like Stephen Ross, but they have first-class stadium, first-class practice facility, commitment to spending money. It's just a matter of them getting the right people in place. And without ownership there, I think they need a strong person who runs the team day in and day out and acts like the surrogate owner. I'm not saying it should be a former coach because coaches are good at coaching. They're not very good at being anything but coaches. But they need somebody to run that building, whether it's the GM, whether it's the VP of football operations, and be that presence every day. But they've been – I mean, look, Rick Spielman was there 16 years. Mike Zimmer was there eight years. Even though they're not showing up every day at the facility, they let their guys do their thing. And so of those three, uh, t- to me, when you consider all factors, uh, I'd say that it's got the potential. Because Kirk Cousins, you can unload him on somebody. Somebody, somebody will take him on. I, I don't know whether you have to pay part of the salary or, or do whatever, but it's only $35 million. The market's now $45 million, and hmm. maybe you find so – I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know who you find. Uh, to take Cousins for one more year. And I know Cousins wants to stay in Minnesota, but, but he's got real limitations. He'll generate some great stats, but when the play that's called falls apart, he, he can't improvise. And, and that, that usually ends up being the ceiling on what that offense can do. But you already you also have Jefferson there and Cook, so which one would you choose, Mike? I know. Uh, oh, I'd, right now the Minnesota job would be the top for me. Huh? I'd go Minnesota, then Denver, then Chicago. Because Chicago, as long as Ted Phillips is there, I, I don't want anything to do with Chicago. How about that? Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.